we're more modern, we've got plastic. How did Carlin say this is like the Earth maybe wanted plastic? Um, I like George Carlin. Uh, anyways, uh, again, these are just these are these are gallon Ziploc bags. These are coming very handy. Uh, there's something to put in your kit now. The very important purpose of having the carry items is so that you can carry and hold water. And uh, you can do transpiration if you needed water. Transpiration is when it's really hot and you have a clear uh, plastic bag or sheeting and you can wrap around a non-toxic or non-poisonous plant bush or leaves that are alive, attached to the tree or the bush. Uh, and in a few hours, the condensation from the plant uh, collects on the, the vapor from the plant co uh, collects on the bag, which creates condensation, which starts to drip down and starts to form uh, little bits of water. And so, especially if it's a hot sunny day, it's gotta be a hot sunny day, right? Um, it has got to be clear plastic. Black plastic won't work, uh, like a trash bag or something like that. Um, but to have something like this, a number of these around, uh, when I did this um, as an experiment, uh, it was 93 degrees, attached to a non-venomous, non-poisonous bush. And I think, I, if I recollect correctly, I think within a, about an hour, I had maybe a, a half a cup of water, drinkable, that tasted good water um, and I, that was just from one bag now if I had done it all over the tree or the bush that I was using then I would have had that much more water within the same amount of time so transpiration is one way to collect water but then you can also uh, carry it as well right uh, as well as other things right obviously but but this would be really good because it's watertight um, again, this went, it's Christmas season, actually it's Christmas Eve today as a matter of fact, uh, and um, Christmas Eve 2018, and uh, this, you know, this is a bag that came with something that I bought, you know, I could reuse this, I could put this in my bag, because it's got a little handle, it's fairly thick, I haven't really tested it to see if it's airtight, but I, I believe it is, I believe there's no holes in it. And again, this could be a way to carry water or to carry, obviously I carried what I bought in here, right? So this would be a good, great transpiration bag, right? Uh, to make things out of. So uh, plastic, white, clear plastic bags work very well as, as a means of a, of a carry item. Uh, you're, I like to keep the, the gallon freezer bags and then sometimes even the smaller sandwich bags work are, are good to have as well. Uh, and then lastly, on the modern thing of things, is um, uh, I like, uh, I, I really appreciate uh, Big John of, of, uh, of the prepared mind. Uh, I really like his approach and just having the prepared mind for preparedness. And uh, he's created the Prepared Mind Night Club. Uh, and he's, you know, there's, there's some there's vetted items that you can get and procure as it relates to um, survival and prepping. And one thing that I bought from uh, his website, the PreparedMind.club, is this 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 water carrier. Um, and it's got a handle, and it's I think it's like I think this holds like three to five gallons of water. Now the problem with that is that it's going to be hard to carry. It's going to be heavy, right? Uh, and in a let's say worst case scenario, emergency scenario, scenario, you know, other people are going to be looking for water. Uh, and so most likely, and so if they see you walking around with a big gallon of water, you might have to uh, defend your, yourself and, and your water supply. So, uh, but, but short of that, this would hold, you know, for a temporary uh, settlement or stay, this would hold enough water uh, for you to stay off for a few days. And uh, you could also, it's got a nice little cap on it that you can, can undo. Um, I was trying to keep this unopened, but I'll go ahead and open it up. Um, so you can get a little better look at it, but it unfolds like this and it looks like this and it's got the cap here where it's easy to fill. It's got a handle for it's easy to carry um, and it's kind of got a box. Uh, the way that it's folded, it's kind of like a box opening so this will get wider as it expands with water uh, and, and it obviously breaks down 
And so this is something I would keep uh, in my car, uh, especially something this size. I mean, it, 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 you know, in any pack that I carry in, I could possibly fit in a pretty decent sized backpack, but um, I'd rather just stick with the, the plastic and the smaller ones. Um, again, I'm, I'm worried about caloric output and carrying too much. So uh, this is a good, good find, a good buy, I think. Um, I got two of them. Again, uh, uh, one is none, two is one. And um, I'll put the, the, the link uh, below um, if you want to go check it out and get one, get one or two or three for yourself. Uh, so uh, at any rate, that's going to kind of conclude um, kind of the carry section of this and just to kind of give some ideas from a resilient living standpoint, both from a primitive and a modern standpoint. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll kind of give you a tour of some of the more primitive carry items that I have. also give you some ideas uh, uh, as you're building a kit or, or, or thinking of preparedness. Uh, lastly, in regards to that, you know, uh, there's all kinds of items. Like I said, there's jars, there's boxes. Um, it's, it's just, there's just things that you can carry. We're surrounded by it when you really start to think. You start to look and you start to look at other things. It's like, oh, you know, how can I use this to carry? You know, what can I carry in this? You know, think of watertight. Think of a sieve, you know, something you could strain something with. Uh, or, or think of, you know, something that's loose. Um, to where it's just going to be a force multiplier and alleviate uh, the, the caloric output that you would have to uh, uh, give off if you were to just carry with your, your hands. All right, so we're going to go check out some of the stuff that I've um, made primitively for the carry items. So on the primitive end of things, I'm going to kind of show you some of the items that I have here that would fall under uh, the purview of the carry and obviously um, we've got coil weaved basketry here um, this is made of raffia I can't remember what the core is um, probably a sedges uh, it's been so long ago um, this is just a little buckskin kit that I made um, from uh, tandy leather uh, out of buckskin uh, it has a rawhide bottom here and then um, the soft buckskin upper again just for carry right you put things in it and you can carry it um, here's a, my very first project where I met uh, Dennis Chilcote, uh, a birch bark artisan, and he also makes brooms, um, really cool brooms, and he's an instructor at the North House Folk School in Grand Marais, Minnesota, and he did a community ed class that I had to take, got to know him, got to know about the school, and uh, this was my first birch bark uh, project. Um, again, more sedges, more coil weaved basketry for carrying or holding here um, again this is a kashishi uh, from the Brazilian uh, uh, martial art form of capoeira and this is used as a rattle it's a rattle here's another rattle I made by the way out of um, rawhide um, but more importantly about this subject this is a birch bark berry basket that uh, I learned how to make from uh, uh, Dennis Chilcote as I mentioned earlier so this piece and this piece um, it's made of birch bark with uh, spruce roots here. And then this is just art of, uh, no, these are spruce lashings here, sewing here. Uh, and then this is willow basketry here. Um, you know, not the most prettiest, not the, not the greatest uh, piece of art. However, it works, it functions, it's durable, strong, and lightweight. Um, again, let's see here. This here is a black ash basketry um, I made from a class at the North House Folk School. We actually pounded out the um, the uh, weavers from uh, a log of black ash. It, it splints, splinters really well for this type of work when you pound it out. And uh, it's got uh, canvas straps here and I made an extra liner uh, as, a, as a third carry item or double carry item. So you've got the, the basket itself and then there's um, there's a bag that I made um, that fits on the inside to protect the inside, but it's also a second bag that's just as big as this basket. So this is a two-in-one, basically. Um, so then we come down here. Uh, this is a little project I tried on my own out of uh, cattails. And this is this cattail square basket. You know, again, it's not a great work of art. I was playing around trying to experiment with the medium, understand what it, what it is. But it's carrying some tea in it. It's a little, it's like a carry 
like it's like a little basket. Again, another uh, sedges with a cap, a pine cone cap, uh, or handle with a lid. And this is um, uh, sedges, coil weaved. A possibles bag out of buckskin, one of the first projects I've made. I'm using a cattail stock as a button here. Um, these are some clay pieces that I did from some clay that I harvested from construction site. And um, it turned black. I can't I really wish I could remember what materials we were using to um, fire this to make it hard. But um, at any rate, um, it turned out pretty well. And this is another one that I made, and it's out of, um, it's the same thing, same clay. And uh, it's got a chip in it because something fell on it. But uh, just, uh, it's, it's carrying some, some, some acorns, white acorns in there. Got little feet. And uh, this is back in the day, my first uh, tracker school here. Yeah, so the certificate's there. Um, this is the, they, they have you make your own bowl by burning it out and spoon. What would what, 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 what frustrated me was people cheated and went to make chopsticks. Yeah, okay, great. Not the point. At any rate, uh, this is one of my first projects for making something to carry in or hold in. We use these every day to eat out of. So this was actually used. It's since retired. Um, I don't really use it anymore, but I keep it as an example, uh, kind of as a quote-unquote museum piece. Uh, this is the first piece of clay pottery that I've done out of natural clay, and this was at the tracker school as well. Again, it's got some dryer lint in there holding it. Um, let's see here, bamboo, kind of like my little fishing kits here. So these can hold things. Um, these, this, this is like a, a spool or the reel for dog wing quarters for fishing. And here's another one I made too. It's the same thing. Bamboo makes excellent containers, excellent. Uh, and uh, this is this corn cob float uh, with dog bane, and then it's got a gorge hook on the end of it. Um, oops. So there's the tiny gorge hook right there. Um, let's see, this is a tortoise shell, shell turtle shell, painted turtle shell that um, I ended up, you know, cleaning out uh, using borax to clean it and. And um, I intend to make a rattle out of this, but this could be a container of some sort uh, or carry item. And these are, what was this? These are surf clam shells um, it's from Japanese uh, fish market. Um, uh, they were alive. Got these last year. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Um, that's sashimi or raw. Really, really good. But the shells were really huge. Shells make excellent tools um, for cutting, scraping, for scooping for holding things and then we have coconut shells now coconuts not uh indigenous to the upper uh midwest um but they do sell them at stores and things and for just cool little rustic projects or if you have a taken a, a, a trip to the jungle or where coconuts grow you can practice how to crack them open and how to utilize them these would make excellent bowls uh different types of containers and stuff like that very dense very hard pretty sturdy Oh, uh, let's see here. What else we got? We've got, uh, this is, um, kind of a buckskin bag I made some years ago. I keep my fire making items in here. And again, it's for carry. It's got, been through some wear and tear with me. And it works pretty well. It's pretty sturdy. Buckskin is very sturdy. And then, uh, lastly, we've got, uh, my, my, um, bamboo canteen. And I finger wove the straps here, made a stopper here that fits over the hole there. And uh, I just put some netting on there just, just to kind of hold everything. Um, it's, it's, this is really sturdy, works really well. Um, it's watertight. And um, I don't know, I can't think, I can't remember the volume. I got to write this stuff down. <laughs> but, you know, it holds enough water um, for, a, uh, for a half a day hike, you know, depending on how hot it is outside. So these are just some rustic examples of uh, carry, primitive carry items. So I'm gonna give you a, just a quick um, example of furoshiki. Uh, basically being able to use uh, a piece of cloth to wrap 
uh, things in decoratively, but also from a practical standpoint uh, to make a makeshift backpack. And hopefully I'm going to um, be able to make uh, another video or two on the ones that I think are uh, my favorite. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I've got this large piece of cloth here. I haven't measured it out, but just to give you an idea real quick, I'm going to make a triangle. So I've taken one end and it's more or less a square that this is. And I want to match one end to the other so that we have a triangle. It'll be real quick, real quick and dirty. All right. So that's what that is. All right. So then next, I want the points that I just matched from the triangle here. I want to go ahead and just do an overhand knot like that. And this is fairly large, so I want those those ears large like that. Then I'm going to take the end here. And I can go ahead and I kind of kind of can give these a twist like this and then match it up to one of these ears and let's do a granny knot. So overhand and then another overhand on top of it like that. And then I find the other end like so. Do the same thing. So I'm going to twist this and then I want to do an overhand and then another overhand for a granny knot. And this pretty much forms our straps like that. And then we can go ahead and take our items or item and put it in the middle like that and then this is the strap here and I'm putting it on because I'm out of frame oops tie that very well Take this like this and then I just sling it on <clears throat> and it's it's more or less on my back right so here's an example of a furoshiki backpack made from a single cloth furoshiki backpack um, and uh, it's fairly large I've also got my sarong on that uh, creates a pouch as you can see um, and if I wear this over the backpack then it's easy for me to take this off and get get at the items and like I mentioned before I could take this off and it becomes a weapon uh, as long as I train with it it becomes a weapon in a, in a uh, severe survival situation so this will give you some ideas just keeping it nice and minimal um, like, uh, you know, I really like Cody Lundin's saying, you know, the more you know, the less you need. Again, if you don't have a lot of money, but you have a couple of sheets in the house, you can make a sarong, you can make a furoshiki uh, backpack and other items as well. Um, there are lots of videos out there on um, people that uh, practice uh, military modern survival that use the shaman or the uh, head wrap um, to keep yourself cool, uh, to, to protect your, your, as a respirator, uh, as a filter for water, uh, as a tourniquet. I mean, there's just, there's a whole nother subject that kind of gets into the weeds outside of just carry items, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to, I'll be able to explore more with, more uh, the, along those lines. So, here we go, it's just a, a Furoshiki backpack. Okay, so lastly, I've almost forgot um, about carry items is um, I used to, uh, my daughter was young. I used to carry her in a rebozo like this that I got from mayasling.com and it's and it's got little rings on it like so and pleats and um, I would put it over my shoulder like so and then I would uh, slide her in. I don't have any 
dolls or anything, but I used to slide her in like this, and her butt would sit, her butt would sit in here, and then her legs would strap there, and I could cover her up, but I could also support her here. But uh, so I had one and a half hands, um, and it, they say that the slings are very good for babies and for infants because they're up and in getting information uh, with the parent. Um, again, this was very convenient to have around and have to push a stroller or anything like that. She was right here with me. Um, uh, the ends of it, I could, it was adjustable here. I also put beads on the end of it. Again, I'm kind of worst case scenario and martially minded. You know, this, this, these beads could, could be a flail if I needed to ward somebody off uh, and escape with my child. So I kind of uh, had this as a decorative, but it also served a purpose. Um, these rings were adjustable. Um, it, it, it did many people across the world in Asia, Africa. I would implore you to look it up. Different baby slings and how they carry their children. Some have it wrapped up so that they're completely on their back. I never trusted it, um, <laughs> so I always had her here, like so. So this was right here, and I knew where she was at. I never put her on the back because I didn't trust people behind me. I didn't trust that she wouldn't all of a sudden lose grip or whatever, fall out backwards. Not a good thing. But just to give you an idea of Carrie, you know, especially as it relates to little kids and infants, um, I would look it up, Maya Sling, M-A-Y-A Sling, uh, .com, and they actually, they you can buy them or they actually show you how to make one. I went on ahead and made one, actually two, and carried it around for a few years.